you mentioned how important it is to be principled. And I'm wondering if you can reflect back about what it was in you as you decided when you were um, working at the U.S. Attorney's Office to begin the Gray Lord probe. Well, that started with the predecessor to Richard Daly as state's attorney was Bernie Carey. And he came to see me and he said, look, I've got this assistant who says that he has seen a lot of corruption going on in the courts, in the criminal courts out here in Chicago. And um, I can't handle it. I don't have the resources to handle it. Uh, would you be willing to take it over and uh, take a look at it? And I did. But then we had to decide whether we would put a wire on Terry Hake. He was still an assistant. And then the debate was, do we use real cases or fake cases? And that was a conundrum because if you use real cases and the Terry takes a bribe and a guy is released from a minor crime and then goes out and commits a Willie Horton crime, then I'm going to get blamed for it. So you can't use real cases, so you got to make fake cases. So we had wonderful FBI agents, just marvelous people, who came up with this whole scenario of faking the reasons for being arrested. Terry would uh, be the assistant and would accept the bribe and or pay off the judge or whatever it was. Then Richard Daly came into office, and then the big question is, his dad appointed all these judges, and the judges were involved in this. So what are we going to do about Richard Daly? So I got Richard Daly into my office, and I, I, I explained the situation to him. I said, we're very concerned about you because your father, I was very direct about it. I told him exactly how I felt. And if, if there's any uh, leak on this, you're going to get blamed for it, whether you're guilty or not. And I would strongly recommend you recuse yourself and put, I forget the name of his first assistant, and, and he did. And so we had the, um, then we had to decide which judge we would go to to get authority to wear a wire. We finally ended up with the chief judge of the criminal court, O'Connell. He was perfect. He was perfect. Very, very courageous thing for him to do. When I left office in 1981, uh, that still was ongoing. And Dan Webb, I remember, Dan gets sworn in and he calls me up. He said, Sullivan, you blank. You leave me with an investigation of the Cardinal, because at that time we had the Cardinal under investigation. He died before it. And all the judges, because he didn't know anything about this when he took office. And I said, Danny, let me just tell you something. You better win those cases or we're both going to be disbarred. First case that goes to trial, Pat Tewitt defends it, not guilty. <laughs> I thought, oh my God, this is going to be the end of all of us. And then a string of guilties after yeah. that. Yeah. So that was the Gray Lord case. How I did you feel think, about all those strings of guilty? Well, I. You know, there was a group of lawyers back then and assistant state's attorneys and judges who were corrupt, and a lot of it came out. Corruption cannot be gotten rid of. You know, there is no permanent deterrent effect. But I do think the Greylord case had a, a uh, chastening effect on uh, the judiciary and the defense bar, and it just brought it to attention. There are certain places where, in the United States where it would be unthinkable that a judge would take a bribe or an assistant state's attorney would take a bribe, but not in Chicago. So I think we did some good there. The permanency of it, I don't know, but uh, I, you hope for the best.